Uh, we're going to turn it over to Kevin Kane. Uh, he is HUD's Chief Housing Market Analyst to give us our quarterly update on the housing market, which is a long-standing tradition for HUD's quarterly updates. Uh, so with that, uh, take it away, Kevin, if you are still on. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. I appreciate that. So it is good to be with everybody this afternoon. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be here or not um, because uh, I had uh, tried out for the uh, Olympic diving team. Um, so it was, uh, it was a close call. I almost uh, almost made it, but I, I, I failed to qualify for the team. Um, they, uh, they gave me some advice. They said I can try out again in four years. Uh, they said uh, learn to swim. Uh, that would be one thing that would be, be useful. Uh, and then something about uh, my, my fear of heights. So, uh, but we'll see. 2025, uh, I'm coming back and, and we'll try this again. Uh, so, but this afternoon, uh, I am going to give an update on uh, the U.S. economy and talk about the sales and rental markets across the country. Uh, the update's going to be as of the first quarter of 2021, uh, but we've got uh, some more recent data that's available for certain variables as well, so I'll discuss that. Uh, as always, I want to give a special thanks to Randall Goodnight and to Marissa Dolan, who uh, put together all the maps that you're going to see in my presentation this afternoon. Uh, we always want to be consistent with our maps, and so the, the color scheme that we use, uh, brown will indicate worse off conditions or declines in a variable, uh, and blue indicates better conditions or increases. So first, I'm going to talk about the economy, uh, then we'll look at the sales and rental markets. And so in this first uh, slide, we've got the monthly job totals for the past two years. And jobs peaked at around 151 million jobs in February of last year. And then in March and April, uh, the country lost 21 million jobs. Uh, by the end of June of this year, uh, the economy had 146.5 million jobs. So at this point now, we've recovered 79% of the jobs that we lost uh, during those two months last year. Uh, and just to, to put this into a little bit of, of recent perspective, uh, as of March of this year, the recovery was at 63%. Uh, so in the, the course of the last three months, we've gone from 63% uh, up to 79% of those jobs recovered. Uh, here we've got a uh, kind of a double feature map uh, for you. Uh, first time we're showing uh, two maps in, in a slide. Uh, so we're looking at the percentage change in non-farm payrolls, which is, is the number of jobs in the economy uh, during the three months ending May 2021. Uh, on the left figure, the left map, uh, the change is relative to a year ago. Uh, and so you see here in the three months ending in May, uh, the jobs are up 4.7% from where they were a year ago. Uh, we can see the whole country is in blue. Everybody, uh, all the regions are, are adding jobs. Uh, but you know, we got to keep all this stuff into perspective. Um, you know, as we just had the, the panel discussion, a lot of discussion about data. And uh, so one of the things when we, when we talk about data, uh, it's interpreting the data, it's, it's analyzing the data. And, you know, when you got a situation like uh, COVID, it makes it more difficult for us to analyze things because, you know, we've, we've seen this huge drop and now we're seeing this big increase. And so, you know, the 4.7% gain, uh, well, this is a gain, but it's coming from that huge loss. So if we look at the map on the right, uh, this is showing the, the three months ending in May compared with where we were two years ago. Uh, and so if we look at where we were two years ago, everything changes, right? Now the whole country is in brown. Uh, we're actually uh, d have declines from where we were two years ago, right? And that simply represents the fact that, that you know, we have not fully recovered yet from uh, COVID. Uh, but we see that the country is down by about 3.9%. Uh, as a whole from where we were at this point two years ago, uh, with the darker brown regions down by more than that national change. Uh, the largest deficit is in New York, New Jersey at eight and a half percent, with the Rocky Mountains having the, the smallest deficit at one and a half percent. Let's talk about the current housing market conditions around the country. So uh, sales markets are generally tight in much of the country. Uh, a little bit of background on, on those conditions. Uh, balanced conditions exist when the quantity of housing supplied equals the quantity demanded. Uh, soft markets occur when the quantity of housing supplied exceeds the quantity demanded and we have a surplus. And then tight conditions uh, exist when demand exceeds supply and we have a shortage. 
Uh, all three home price indices show that home sales prices were up approximately 15 to 18 percent uh, from a year ago, and that's as of May of this year. Uh, the rate of increasing continues to accelerate for home prices. Uh, home sales themselves were up 23% in June from a year ago. That's according to the National Association of Realtors. Uh, nationally, there was a 1.4 month supply of available inventory, and that's down from 2.8 months a year ago, and that's based on Redfin data. Uh, and just to put that month's supply into perspective, Generally, when the market is balanced, we consider uh, there to be about a six month supply of housing. So the fact that we're at 1.4 months, uh, that just tells you, you know, kind of how tight these markets are around the country. Uh, apartment market conditions are mixed around the country. Uh, the apartment vacancy rate, this is according to Reese data, uh, was 5.3% in May, and rents were down 2.9% from a year ago. Uh, the vacancy rate was up by 0.5 percentage points uh, this year relative to last year. And I got a little bit more that I'm going to say on that Reese data when we get into the, the rental sections a little bit later. Here we've got uh, conditions around the country. These are assessments that are provided by our regional and field economists uh, relative to last quarter. Improvements in an area are shown in blue and declines in conditions are shaded in brown. Uh, on the sales side, conditions in general, again, are, are tight around the country. Uh, in the mid-Atlantic and in the Southwest, uh, previously balanced conditions have now tightened further. Uh, the rental market in, in, uh, around the country, uh, generally mixed conditions. Uh, many of the large metropolitan areas have seen an increase in vacancies and a decline in rents, uh, which is the opposite from what we're seeing in a, a lot of the, the mid-sized to smaller metropolitan areas around the country. So, you know, my thought is that uh, some of the, the changes that we're seeing in the larger metropolitan areas uh, may be having a big influence on the, the Reese numbers. And that's why we, we see the, the decline in the vacancy or in the, uh, the, the rents from a year ago. Uh, conditions in the Rocky Mountains since the first quarter have tightened significantly on both the sales and the rental side. Uh, here in this figure, we're looking at the three different home price indices. Uh, all three indices have shown significant increases in prices since the middle of 2020. Uh, in May of 2021, uh, the S&P Case-Shiller Index showed a gain of 17%. Uh, the FHFA Index was up by 18%, and the CoreLogic Index was up by 15%. Uh, according to the Census Bureau, the median price of a new home in June was up 6% from a year ago. And based on the National Association of Realtors, uh, the median price for an existing home in June uh, was up by more than 23% from a year ago. And here we see the year-over-year -year change in the CoreLogic Home Price Index as of April. Uh, nationally, uh, in April, home prices were up by 13% from a year ago. And prices increased in every state. Uh, states that are in the two light shades of blue increased by less than the national average. Uh, states in the other three shades uh, were up by more than the national average. Uh, and that's led by a 27% increase in Idaho uh, and a 20% gain in Arizona. Uh, prices were up by double digits in 38 states. Uh, the smallest gain, which was 5%, uh, that occurred in D.C. as well as in New York. Let's take a look here at sales. Here we've got a, a trifecta, right, showing three, three figures in one slide. Uh, according to the National Association of Realtors, uh, existing home sales increased by 44.6% in May from a year ago. And that's what we're seeing up here in the, the upper left figure. So we've got a 44.6% increase uh, in May 2021 relative to where we were last year. And once again, we wanna provide a little bit of context here to, to help explain these numbers and, and put a little bit of history in here. So if we look at the figure in the, the upper right, uh, this shows the change from May of 2019 to May of 2020. Uh, and what we see is a decline. So there was a decline of about 26%. Uh, and again, the whole country now in brown, so we had declines in, in all of the regions. Uh, so what we did in the, the figure down on the bottom left is say, well, okay, let's take a look at, at the change from May of 2019 to May of 2021. So 
looking over the course of the last couple of years, what has happened here with existing home sales. And we see that the national change was 7.2%. Uh, the largest change in the country was in uh, this southern region, uh, up by 12.1%, uh, with kind of moderate increases around the, the rest of the country. Next map shows the percent of home loans that are 90 or more days delinquent uh, in foreclosure or an REO at the regional level as of April of 2021. Uh, and again, REO stands for real estate owned, which means that the lender now owns the property. Uh, the national average was 3.4% uh, of all loans in those three categories. This was up by 1.4% from a year ago. And all of the increase came from the 90 or more days delinquent category. Uh, in that particular category, uh, that increased by 230% uh, as foreclosures declined by 23% and the REO stock was down by 57%. Uh, and that's because we've got uh, more borrowers taking advantage of the various forbearance programs around the country. Uh, the areas in blue are below the national average, uh, while the areas in brown are above the national average. And the highest concentration is in New York, New Jersey, which had a rate of 5.4%, followed by the Southwest at 4.3%. Uh, rates were up in all 10 regions, and they were also up in every metropolitan area across the country relative to a year ago. So that's kind of a, a surprising statistic as well when you see that kind of uniformity across the country. Uh, in terms of single family home building, uh, single family home building, this is looking at the building permits issued, uh, that was up by 41% during the three months ending in April uh, compared with a year ago. Uh, and that compares with a 4% increase last year. Uh, so we've seen a, a big uh, boom here in single family building. Uh, builders are responding to that, that low inventory of homes that are available. Uh, as well as the large price gains that we're seeing across the country. Uh, the number of homes permitted increased in all 10 regions. So the whole country here is shown in blue, uh, with the regions in the darker blue increasing faster than the national average. Uh, and that was led by the Midwest with an increase of 58%, followed by New York, New Jersey, which was up by 54%. Switching over to the multifamily side, uh, the number of multifamily units permitted uh, increased by 30% across the country in the three months ending April. Uh, and that compares with a decline of 7% a year ago. Uh, once again, the whole country is in blue, indicating that multifamily permitting was up in all of the regions. Uh, and again, the dark blue areas uh, increased more than the national average. Uh, increases were led by the Mid-Atlantic, where uh, multifamily permits were up 110% uh, from a year ago, followed by 40% increases in both New York, New Jersey, as well as in New England. And so now let's take a look at the rental markets in the country. Uh, so here we see the average apartment vacancy rate in the United States uh, was 5.3%. Uh, and this shows the 275 areas that uh, were covered by uh, the REIS data. Um, and this data is for May of 2021. Uh, areas in blue were above the national rate, while those in brown were below. Uh, 199 market areas out of the 275 covered were below the national average, uh, and those are all in brown. Uh, and then there were three areas that were equal to the national average. Those also uh, show up in the brown color. Uh, and then 73 areas that were above the national average uh, and those shown in blue. And here we look at the change in those vacancy rates from a year ago. Uh, so again, according to the Reese data, the national apartment vacancy rate was up by half a percentage point from a year ago. Uh, and that's been steady for about the last five months, the vacancy rate. Uh, of the 275 areas covered by Reese, uh, the vacancy rate declined in 88 areas, shown in brown, was unchanged in 27 areas, and up in 160 areas. And that increase, uh, those are the blue areas that you see. Uh, areas that are in the two darker shades of blue were up by more than the national average, and of those areas with an increase, 
uh, 45 of those areas increased by one percentage point or more. And in the last slide that I'll show you, uh, this takes a look at uh, the change in rents. Uh, so rents were down by 2.9% uh, or $43 nationally uh, with the Reese data in May of 2021 relative to where things were a year ago. Uh, the rents actually have been increasing the last couple of months, right? So uh, relative to a year ago, they're down, but the last couple of months, the Reese data are showing an increase. Uh, other sources of data that we look at, though, they are showing increases in rents across the country. So just something to, to kind of be aware of. Uh, again, I believe that the Reese data are showing this decline because uh, perhaps the national number is a bit more weighted on those major metropolitan areas. Uh, where we do see, you know, a decline in rents across many major metropolitan areas. Um, but uh, as we're going to see here with the numbers, uh, overall, most metropolitan areas have actually had an increase. Uh, so when we look, uh, 164 areas that are shown in blue, uh, they actually had a gain in rent. Uh, and uh, the areas that are in brown, uh, there's 107 of those areas, uh, those had a decline in rent. Uh, so rents declined faster than the national average in 26 metropolitan areas. And if you listen to these uh, areas, you're going to see, right, these are, these are the major metros where we've seen uh, significant declines in rents. Uh, San Francisco, New York, D.C., uh, Boston, Los Angeles, Seattle, Chicago, Austin, Orlando, right? So I think those are uh, part of that reason why we see that overall national rate uh, of rent declining. Uh, another thing here that we want to mention is the single family rental market. Uh, the single family rental market has been very strong and rents in single family homes are up about 6% in April relative to a year ago. Uh, and that's based on uh, John Burns real estate consulting data. So in conclusion, uh, jobs were up 4.7% in the three months ending May compared with a year ago. Uh, sales markets are tight in most of the country. Uh, home prices up by 15 to 18% in May relative to a year ago. Uh, and sales increased by 23% in June. Uh, and apartment market conditions mixed throughout the country. Uh, rents are down. Again, kind of throw a question mark there. They're, they're certainly down in the major metro areas, but uh, not in most of the, the mid size and smaller metro areas. Uh, and vacancy rates up uh, half a percentage point relative to a year ago. So as always, if anybody has any uh, questions, comments, thoughts, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me uh, or you can reach out to one of our uh, regional or field economists. We'd be happy to, to talk to you about the markets. Uh, you can go to the, the huduser.gov website um, or you can, again, feel free to, to get in touch with me as well.